Commodity indices were created in the United States and included U.S. dollars denominated and U.S.-based contracts in their baskets. However, this is shifting and over recent years we have seen the development of a European offering. Welcome to the first in the series of the S&P indices and NYSE live commodity snapshots. Joining me are Mike McGlone, a senior director at S&P Indices, and Nick Kennedy, Commodity Derivative Manager at NYSE Life. Traditionally, the United States has been a hub for commodities. Why is that? It, it's really related to the futures market. Commodities, the most liquid way to measure commodities is in basket together. You have to use futures. And futures really became, the development of futures really started in Chicago in around the Around the, turn of, around the uh, time of the Civil War. Farmers could not, um, when they came to the market in the fall to, with their harvest, they had issues with depressing prices. So they needed a centralized place where they could hedge their prices. So producers and consumers got together and formed the Board of Trade in about 1850 or so in Chicago. Um, and what really accelerated the success was the French. And maybe Nick can expand on that being <laughs> from France. So. Absolutely. Thanks. Yeah, indeed. No, the funny thing is about the French is that. Uh, Times have changed a lot, but uh, at that time in 1855, they actually did all their hedging of their own wheat in the Chicago market. So the French switched switch to France. Yeah, from I mean, to New Chicago. York to Chicago. Yeah. Right, absolutely right. And what is causing this shift back to Europe then? Uh, quite a few things. I mean, don't forget. I mean, Europe is a big producer of wheat. I mean, uh, a very important producer of wheat. But there was a big pol political lobby um, recently with the common agricultural policy, which has only started to liberalize about 10 years ago. Uh, and since then, early 2000s, we're seeing really uh, development of these markets. The futures are, you know, growing with much more liquidity. So this is a new alternative to uh, to this asset class. What kind of opportunity is this shift creating? Well, I think one of the key things it, it provides um, diversification for investors and, and additional choices. Investors can have focus on more of a regional focus um, in different commodities. For instance, wheat. Um, Nick, maybe you can expand on wheat that trades in Europe versus wheat that trades in Chicago. No, it's an important point. I mean, wheat, people don't really realize this, but the, the wheat market in, in Europe is twice the size of the wheat market in the U.S. So, I mean, the potential for growth is huge. There's no reason why, you know, in a few years down the line, the Paris market should be quite as big as the Chicago market. And are uh, indices providers adjusting to this change? Well, we have um, at S&P. In 2010, we launched the S&P World Commodity Index, the WCI, and that focuses on all the liquid futures that trade in the world outside of the U.S. There was fears, a little bit of fears of potential U.S. regulation and demand for more regional focused for commodities. So we have the S&P WCI Europe and S&P WCI Asia. S&P WCI Europe focuses on commodities that just trade in Europe, metals, um, energy, and agriculture. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Nick. Until the next time. Thank you.